Hello, Guyana, and welcome to The Public Interest. I am Malaika Ramsey. Thank you very much for joining us this week. This week on The Public Interest, we are focusing on the fact that Guyanese servicemen and servicewomen are preparing to go to the polls on the 2nd of May, Saturday, the 2nd of May, 2015. Of course, with me is, uh, some people call him a former serviceman, but I still like to address him as a serviceman, leader of the People's National Congress Reform and presidential candidate for a Partnership for National Unity Alliance for Change, Brigadier the Honorable David Granger. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Malika. All right. Great to have you, sir. And it's, it's very, it's extremely significant this week because, as I said earlier, our servicemen and servicewomen are preparing to go to the polls. How are you expecting them to vote? Well, this is a particularly auspicious year for the Guyana Defense Force. It's the 50th anniversary year. Okay. Uh, the Guyana Defense Force was established in 1965. In fact, I joined the force in 1965. Mm. So were I in uniform, I'd be celebrating with them today. But mm. it's important for them because there have been a lot of changes over the years. And unfortunately, over the last 15 years particularly, since um, 1999, when Bar Jagdio became president, I think um, we started to see some serious problems in the country, problems affecting the, the security of the nation as a whole, and problems affecting human safety, our women, our children, our minors, our farmers, our fishermen, um, started to face um, a, a rising surge in crime, particularly serious crime. Right now, there are about three armed robberies every day in Guyana. And we have a rate of murder, which is greater than that of the United States. Mm -hmm. So um, our security forces are under pressure. And I would expect that when the servicemen and servicewomen go to vote, they'll be thinking of their jobs. They'll mm -hmm. be thinking of their profession. They'll be thinking of how can we make Guyana safe when we have a government which for the last 23 years has not given us tools to do the job. But sir, the fact is in our society, many persons, and uh, beginning with uh, government and uh, even ordinary uh, civilians, would have blamed uh, some of our servicemen and servicewomen for the state that Guyana is currently in regarding security. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are quite contrary to that because from my own experience in the Defense Force and from my own observations as a citizen, it is clear that the government is failing the security forces. It is clear to me that uh, the government of Ghana has received advice and information and recommendation, not only from its own local um, discipline forces commission, but also from the United Kingdom. There are about 15 reports um, pointing towards the improvement of security, which the government has simply thrown through the window. The worst case uh, took place about seven years ago when an actual agreement was signed between Dr. Luncheon and the British High Commissioner by the name of Fraser Wheeler. And within weeks, the government repudiated the agreement, which would have brought about 3.7 million pounds sterling um, benefits to the police force, mainly the police force. The government repudiated it. So there is something in Mr. Jagdeo's mentality and in the mindset of the PPP, which is more important than security. They seem to be happy with insecurity. Sir, you've said it time and time again, um, of course it's a fact, that you did uh, serve on that Discipline Forces um, Commission. Why should our servicemen and servicewomen believe that David Granger would adopt some of those policies and recommendations to make their situation better? Because as part of the process which led to those recommendations, some of the recommendations were mine. And I asked questions, I made inputs, because I believed at that time that the government um, was serious, but I was wrong. The government had no intention of implementing those recommendations. But I have never um, abandoned the defense force and the police force. There were over 164 recommendations including recommendations for the improvement of pay, recommendations for the provision of certain assets and facilities like aircraft and boats and all-terrain vehicles, um, recommendations for the improvement of the conditions under which the policemen work and, and live, and soldiers as well. So I know what happened um, 11 years ago, 
And I intend that 11 days from now, I will start to put them in practice. I, uh, sir, that brings me to my next question. How soon can a, a, a day, what would you, at this point, uh, even an hour before the, the service, men and service women go to the polls, what would you say to them in terms of how soon can a David Granger coalition government fix their problems and where are you going to get the money from? Well, I would say this, that all of the servicemen I've met in the police or the defense force are interested in professions. These are not um, the workers. These are not persons who are just looking for a job. These are professionals. And they would like to see the conditions improve. So I have no doubt that uh, within days of getting into office, we will be able to bring about changes. We will be able to set up a commission to review their salaries. We will be able to determine based on studies which had been conducted 11 years ago, 15 years ago, and what improvements need to be made. I'm aware of some of the problems myself, and I reckon that uh, the servicemen could look forward to progress within days to improve their condition. Every time I go around the country in the hinterland areas, I see policemen poorly paid, no transport, and um, it has been a very difficult uh, period for them, service in the Hitler. They want to serve, but they want to be given the tools to do their jobs. So they can look forward to changes right in the month of May. Sir, in terms of, again, the way the servicemen and servicewomen vote, I want to ask you if uh, there's something that would affect that. Uh, you have said time and time again, and again, this is, is, is public knowledge. Uh, unfortunately, we have to mention Mr. Jaglio. Mr. Jaglio and the PPPC would have, over the years, abused the servicemen and, servicemen and servicewomen. Of course, we can talk about the things that they say about uh, Brigadier David Granger, the shooting of um, uh, Brigadier Collins, and recently, uh, Admiral Gary Best would have uh, publicly stated that he's supporting the coalition, and he would also have suffered a list of, a verbal, a list of verbal attacks on him. Now, do you believe that these things would have an impact on how our servicemen and servicewomen vote come Saturday? Exactly. I do believe so, because uh, I brought a motion in the National Assembly calling for a condemnation of the shooting of Brigadier Collins and the other persons in December 2011. Um, and that motion was carried. I called for an investigation. The investigation has not been held. Um, we have taken action in the National Assembly to call for investigation into all sorts of abuses. And it is my view that the, pol the policemen and soldiers are aware of the abuse of President Jack Dio towards uh, officers who would serve with distinction. Um, every part of the Western Hemisphere, you see honor paid to ex-military officers. Uh, in recent memory, Eisenhower was a very well-known general during the Second World War. He became president. Uh, John F. Kennedy, when he was running for presidency, um, publicized his military service. Um, uh, George Bush Sr. was also a serviceman. Um, so everywhere, people are proud of their servicemen. But in Guyana, Mr. Jaguar feels he can abuse and criticize without justification without reason, without truthfulness. And that is what I think is painful for members of the forces. Um, not that they have been ignored, but to add insult to injury, Jagdio abuses persons who have served well in, in the forces. Very hurtful. Sir, I'd also like to give you a chance, an opportunity to dispel some of the rumors. Um, of course, the PPP would have been uh, going wrong to various communities saying uh, that Granger has surrounded himself with military personnel who would not necessarily do good things after uh, the APNU AFC wins the regional and general uh, election, 2015 elections. How would you try to uh, dispel those rumors and keep those citizens from having a certain dislike for our servicemen and servicewomen? Because in fact, that's what it does. It, it supports them disliking our servicemen and servicewomen. Well, these rumors have been peddled by by Jack Dio, Roger Luncheon, and other people in the PPP hierarchy. To start with, there are only two former officers in the entire National Assembly during the 10th Parliament, that is myself and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Harmon. I cannot see how two officers retired 
could dominate a 65-member parliament. And it is the PPP, on the other hand, which has been most, most avidly, most vigorously recruiting um, officers, serving officers, as well as former officers. It is well known that um, Major General Singh, Major General Attlee, um, have worked with, or are working with the government. I don't criticize them for that. It is their um, uh, choice. And I am sure they're doing good professional work. Um, working with the government does not necessarily um, make them unprofessional. And then, of course, you have other officers, the head of the uh, Civil Defense Commission, the Auditor General of Guyana. So the PPP administration has been assiduously recruiting officers. And if they felt that ex-officers were so bad, why are they recruiting so many ex-officers? I'm sure there must be a dozen or more ex-officers serving in the government system alone. And many more are serving in business in other parts of the country, with distinction. Are you, con are you concerned that within the next 24 hours, of course, when this broadcast is released, within the next 24 hours, you, another uh, uh, list of attacks may be unleashed on you for calling on the servicemen and servicewomen to vote AP and UAFC? No, I don't expect that. Um, they will make their choices based on um, their conscience and, of course, the, their professions which they serve. They know very well that I speak the truth. They know that I intend to give them the best resources to enable them to do their work. So I'm not afraid of how they will vote. I just want to encourage them not to be distracted, not to be diverted, not to be confused by what people like um, Dr. Luncheon and Mr. Jagdi have been saying. If they look around their services, they will say, is this the type of force that the PPP can boast of after 23 years? And more than that, they must look to see the type of force that was built up by officers like myself over the past decades. As I said, this is the 50th anniversary year, and the PPP didn't create the GDF. It was created in a previous era, and the traditions, the values of the force were built up over a long period of time. And it's the PPP which is damaging those values now by its intrusive attitude and its abusive attitude towards um, ex-officers. Sir, um, before we have to begin to wrap up with, uh, at the risk of sounding uh, a bit redundant, specifically, first off, my first question before we begin to wrap up, why should our service women and service men not vote for Donald Ramatar and the PPPC on May uh, 2, on the 2nd of May 2015? They should not vote for the PPP because the PPP is going to continue to miniaturize them. The PPP is not and does not ever um, have any, or has not ever had any intention of giving the defense and police forces the uh, materials that they need to keep this country safe. It has never given them the personnel. Both the army and the police are on the strength. They need aircraft, they need boats, they need all-terrain vehicles. They need to be intelligently deployed. And there needs to be much less interference in their work. And evidence has emerged that during the troubles um, between 2002 and 2008, it was the president himself who may have actually dismantled organizations and units which could have contributed to the uh, intelligence gathering and towards, the, um, towards bringing the troubles to an end. So you can see because of the intrusive behavior of the PPP uh, presidents, and also because of the failure to introduce measures, even measures which have been recommended by foreign government. We, we had ended up in a situation in which the army and police themselves are being blamed, when in fact the blame should rest squarely with the PPP civic administration. The soldiers should not vote for Mr. Ramatar because Mr. Ramatar will simply continue the type of um, neglect of the police and army which we have seen over the last 23 years. And finally, sir, why should our service women and service men vote for David Granger and a Partnership for National Unity Alliance for Change? You should vote for David Granger because David Granger is a true bona fide military officer. I care about the soldiers and their families. I care about the security of the state. And the whole country could rest assured that under the APNU AFC administration, Guyana will be safer because the security forces will be equipped to protect 
country's integrity and to protect the lives of its citizens. That's why they should vote for APNU and AFC. Thank you very much, sir. Leader of the People's National Congress Reform and uh, leader, and of course, he's a presidential candidate for a Partnership for National Unity, Alliance for Change. And I would also like to join him in the call, uh, calling on our servicemen and our service women to, to vote solidly for a Partnership for National Unity, Alliance for Change, come Saturday, May 2nd, 2015. I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you very much for joining us, and do join me again next time. Goodbye. <laughs>